Coming up, a judge decides whether Larry Miliete will stay in jail or be granted bail as he awaits trial for the murder of his wife, Maya. Did his shadow team obstruct justice in Asasio Rojas' death? His family says yes, and now they're demanding justice. Vandalism at a Chula Vista High School is being investigated as a hate crime. Longtime cleaners preparing to close its doors due to high rent and the pandemic. The real estate market in San Diego is exploding, which means properties like these are being listed at a huge price. And it just may be the world's largest potato, where it was dug up. News 8 starts right now. A judge has denied bail for the husband of Maya Miliete. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. Larry Miliete will stay behind bars as he waits to stand trial for his wife's murder. As News 8's David Gofferson reports, prosecutors successfully argued that the 40-year-old father was a danger to the community and his three children. May Miliete would not have abandoned her children. She would not, could not, loved them very much. The prosecutor opposed bail for Larry Miliete, arguing in Chula Vista court Thursday that the father of three is a flight risk and a risk to the community. He is facing murder charges in the death of his wife, Maya Miliete, who he allegedly thought was cheating on him. He was wishing a death spell, um, harm to the person he believed was having an affair with his wife. Deputy District Attorney Christy Bowles also told the judge Miliete is a risk to his three children. They are collateral victims of domestic violence here in this case. They were at home uh, when this incident occurred. But Miliete's attorney argues there is no evidence the mother of three is dead because her body has not been found. She said her client is willing to wear a GPS tracking device if released on bail. There has been no record of any violence whatsoever in his entire life. Bonita Martinez continued her arguments outside the courtroom, saying Maya had left the family on previous occasions and sometimes went hiking and motorbike riding by herself. She left on her own volition. The husband has not hurt her, not even once, even though she was unfaithful. But the judge was having none of it. She pointed out by law she has to assume the charges against Miliete are true. Mr. Miliete is alleged to have killed his wife in their home while his three children were present. He's also alleged to have taken their four-year-old son with them to dispose of her body. On Tuesday, Maya's sister, Mary Chris Droulet, filed a petition in probate court seeking guardianship of the three Miliete children, ages 5, 10, and 11. Currently, the kids are living with Larry Miliete's parents in Chula Vista. The judge ruled their father will not be getting out of jail. There's clear and convincing evidence that he's a danger to the community. His request for bail is denied. Miliete's next hearing in his criminal case is set for December 16th in Chula Vista court. But on Wednesday of, ne of next week, there's a hearing in probate court on that guardianship petition filed by Maya's sister. It's possible Larry Miliete will be in that hearing as well. Carlo? And David, will family members and friends be back out searching for Maya's remains this coming weekend? Yes, they're heading out to the Glamis Sand Dunes where Larry and Maya camped out with relatives at least three times in 2020, including the, re the weekend right before she went missing. And David Grofferson with the latest developments. Thanks, David. A search is underway for an 83-year-old woman from Fallbrook who has been missing since yesterday afternoon. Here's a picture of Elena Roy. She was last seen near her home on Wood Creek Drive. She was wearing a shirt with three colors, light blue, dark blue, and white, and she had on dark pants. Sheriff's deputies are asking anyone who sees her or who have, may have seen her to please call 911. Firefighters are battling a small brush fire in Santee. This you see here broke out just before five this evening near Carlton Oaks Drive and Carlton Hills Boulevard. As you can see, it was contained to a small brushy area, but does not appear to be threatening any homes. We'll bring you any updates as we get them and here on here and on our digital platforms. Family and community members are demanding justice after they say a shadow team covered up evidence in the killing of Anastasio Hernandez Rojas. 
Rojas died while in Border Patrol custody. Human rights activists are calling it a murder. And now Congressional Representatives Juan Vargas and Sarah Jacobs are calling on the Department of Justice to act. News 8's Kirsten Holmes is live downtown with the new details. Kirsten? Yeah, we just got word about an hour ago that members of Congress are now asking for an investigation into those shadow units within Border Patrol. I'm here at the Hall of Justice where Rojas's family and activists say that that Border Patrol unit was responsible for a cover up in Rojas's death. And they say unless someone holds them accountable, they will get away with murder. In the beginning, I was very mad. I was very mad, I'm not going to lie. But me and my family, we always knew that this was the case. Maria Puga is the widow of Anastasio Hernandez Rojas. This 2010 cell phone video captures Border Patrol agents beating and tasing Rojas while he was restrained, leading to his death. This happened in 2010. All of the evidence was destroyed. We, we got this video footage because a brave young woman came forward and gave us this footage. Michelle Salieri believes they have evidence of a cover-up and wants District Attorney Summer Stephan to investigate Rojas' death and hold the shadow team, formerly known as the Critical Incident Investigative Team, accountable, who Salieri says covered up Rojas' death. This case could have been brought forward years before if this information had been presented. We know that people lose their lives routinely at the hands of Border Patrol. These facts are particularly egregious because we now know about the shadow unit that operated to cover up the murder of Mr. Hernandez Rojas. Genevieve Jones Wright is the executive director of Community Advocates for Just and Moral Government. Falsifying evidence, directing witnesses, tampering with evidence, and to think that a government agency engages in this level of corruption with impunity. Is sickening. U.S. Customs and Border Protection said in an earlier statement, the U.S. Border Patrol maintains teams with specialized evidence collection capabilities across the southwest border as many critical incidents involving CBP operations occur in remote locations where other agencies may be unwilling or unable to respond. Activists aren't buying that response. Enough is enough in that unit end the corruption and hold these folks accountable. We're not encountering this amongst white immigrants, we're just not. Meanwhile, Rojas's family awaits answers. See the evidence and see this case and hear our case out because it's been 11 years of injustice. We reached out to the San Diego District Attorney's Office for comment on this story and their office says, quote, we have not received a case for review. The district attorney's office stands ready to pursue justice when the evidence supports it and where we have jurisdiction. We can't comment on the Department of Justice's review of this matter. Now, in a joint statement, Representatives Vargas, Jacobs, and Joaquin Castro of Texas request that the Justice Department open up an investigation into the shadow units at the center of this case. Marcella? Kirsten, it has been more than 10 years, but you can still see, of course, his family wants answers. What's next in this case? Okay, so now that the story is changing a little bit, we have an update for you. Those representatives with the with Congress, they got the ball rolling on this case, and it's just an ask right now to the Justice Department. It is still up to the Justice Department to open up their investigation. And in the meantime, D.A. Stephan here in San Diego received the group's evidence that they believe is a cover-up. It's now in her hands or the Justice Department's hand. We'll keep you posted. All right, we'll continue to follow this case. Thanks, Kirsten. A nurse at the Las Colinas detention facility faces involuntary manslaughter charges connected to the death of an inmate back in 2019. The DA's office says the victim, 24-year-old Elisa Serna, seen here, died after she fell in front of Dana Lee Pasqua. They say Pasqua failed to take Serna's vitals and left her on the ground of her cell for about an hour. Pasqua is expected to be arraigned November 18th. If convicted, she could face up to four years in prison. Taking a stand against hate and anti-Semitism, leaders in Chula Vista are working together to find solutions. Today, they addressed recent acts of vandalism targeting several schools in their community. News 8's Dana Marie McNichol has more on the unified response. A press conference today at Benita High School addressed the vandalism that officers found here on campus. When they arrived, they saw anti-Semitic and homophobic slurs spray painted on some of the doors and walls. You can even see the blurred out images officers sent us. The Chula Vista Police Department is investigating this incident as a hate crime. 
This morning, we heard from Chula Vista Council member Steve Padilla, who attended this high school. The content, the ideation, the messaging, the hate speech directed at people of the Jewish faith and heritage and culture and those in the LGBTQ community is very, very, very disturbing. Vandalism was also found on the Bonita Vista Middle School campus. The reason for the vandalism on both campuses is not known, but both incidents are believed to be related due to the colors of teal, yellow, and black being used to spray paint at both locations. The vandalism was quickly washed off before students returned to school on Monday. We also heard from San Diego County Supervisor Nora Vargas, who spoke about how to move forward past this hate, which is not tolerated. We have to be better than that. We have to come together. We need to make sure as a county, as a community, to get the tools that we need to be able to say enough is enough. The Chula Vista Police Department is still looking for witnesses or suspects in this incident. They're urging you to call Crime Stoppers if you have any information. In Chula Vista, I'm Dana Marie McNichol.